Hello. Uh, welcome along again to my channel. Uh, as, as promised in the last video, this video is going to be on, on bloat and looking at uh, clover and certainly the downside of having clover in the swords. Uh, what causes bloat and the impact it has really. Um, so I've spoken before in another video about how I've been reluctant to to push clover into swords for a long time because when I was share milking 300 cows I lost 15 cows one day with bloat and it had such a massive mental and economic impact on me I just I've always been a bit reluctant to really push it because it's a massive downside of having having uh, a lot of clover and swords so you can put uh, five kilos per hectare two kilos per acre of clover and with your seed mixes and in, in some paddocks you'll end up very clover dominant and in other paddocks you'll end up with very very little clover in it you know and that's that can be a real issue on farm but it's not just clover you know you can get bloat from lush grass as well and especially when you're applying nitrogen and that nitrogen hasn't converted across to a true protein amino acid then then that will cause more foaming so i mean bloat is caused by a stable foam trapping the gases normally cows belch out all the time and that's your enteric fermentation that would that we're dealing with with cows and it's a normal process but uh, when there are ex there's excessive gas buildup, then uh, it, the cows kind of block up and are no longer able to belch enough of it out, and then they uh, they end up with too much trapped gas in them, which causes them to blow up, and 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 it's an excruciating way for the cows to die. So, you know, it's it's a really tough thing to deal with the thought of cows, um, you know, even dealing with with bloat as such, or even going to the point of dying from it. So. Um, I'm actually back on farm in the paddocks where I did the reseeding video uh, so these paddocks were reseeded this year and uh, there was uh, two kilos per acre five kilos per hectare of white clover went in the mix and they've had massive issues so uh, one cow died the end of July um, two cows of September at that time there was no bloat oil being used and um, they've used bloat oil since and and also now um, because the cows cross the road, the whole herd comes across together and, and they thought that would reduce the risk is that, you know, all the cows are coming in together so there's not, not as much selection for the cows that get here first. Um, now, obviously, they're being fed silage before they come across. So um, the covers are also a lot higher at the moment, uh, which, which is really helping the cause as well. So the grass is a bit more dominant now and, and the bloat risk has reduced enough but um, I saw last year on social media somebody in Wexford who um, who had lost calves in a, in a mixed species sword <laughs> and was talking about, uh, you know, got to the point where, my God, maybe I'll just spray um, forefront and get rid of the clover and it just makes me absolutely cringe because it's just the thought of having a chemical and, and what happens in the soil with it. Um, to wipe out the clover is, is tough but there's been discussions even here about not including clover anymore because the stress that it's caused having the clover in the sword uh, i had a client uh, last week who lost six cows of bloat you know it's just excruciating i mean the price of cows at the moment this year six cows i mean there's really twenty thousand euros gone in in, uh, in actual uh, value so it's a massive economic impact and mentally as well for these people who are dealing with the bloat and and always the stress of when cows come across here dealing with the bloat it's 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 a massive impact so uh, there's a few contributing factors in it and of course first and foremost clover is is producing a lot more gas than what the grass will um, in, in, a, in a situation like this where it's in its first year and we know the white clover isn't actually producing nitrogen for the grass yet there has been nitrogen applied that can be a bit of a problem because when your nitrogen hasn't converted across to a true protein amino acid then that accentuates the bloat risk as well so um yeah not not helpful in year one so we'll, we're hoping that the the bloat risk will be reduced next year when if the clover is dominant there'll be very little nitrogen applied over here and there's also a correlation between potassium and sodium and this was always my concern in Ireland is that because there's quite a lot of potassium applied 
that um, that that sodium potassium ratio is out of kilter and then again you know produces a lot more gas off the clover when when you're struggling with that um, with that potash um, in the system so there are things you can do to reduce the bloat risk there's also things that accentuate it so um, reduce the bloat risk by, by using your silage and your bloat oils um, managing a small strip first having all the cows going to the smaller strip and then mo uh, moving that fence and allowing them to have the rest of the break so that they have uh, yeah, a reduced intake of the clover in, initially um, things that accentuate it are you know, chemical nitrogen application uh, can accentuate it your, your potash levels will accentuate it but also in the mixed species uh, situation there is research would suggest that the tannins in plantain will it they won't cause bloat they'll, but they'll accentuate the, the the gassing from the other plants and so in a lot of cases when you have um, mixed species going in uh, your herbal lays then um, the, the, the plantain can accentuate the risk as well so um, yes things you can do to prevent it uh, but there'll always be that risk really so yeah um, there's a few contributing factors there's a few things you can do I mean obviously if you can feed a little bit of silage and, and get just something in in their room and before they go out to this uh, very clovery pasture that's a really good thing um, just being aware that if cows are going out all the time as they're being milked that the first cows out are going to have no selection pressure they're going to be looking to go to those very clovery patches first and foremost and so they're at, at greater risk um, and just bloat oil you know using bloat oil is huge um, but as far as clover goes it's, it's such an important plant to have you know have legumes in your sward when you when you have an interest in soils like clover does so much more than just reduce your nitrogen usage it, it, uh, it actually pulls the, the soil into more ball like structure around the roots which allows for better water infiltration it'll, it'll help your water holding capacity going into dry spells um, it'll free up some phosphate in the soil and that it actually sends an acid exudate to break the, 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 the locked up phosphate away from your calcium in the soil. There's a lot of things that the clover plant does and of course in organic systems you have to have clover in your swords to provide that nitrogen. Nitrogen is a critical element but there's a massive downside and it's just realising that, um, that, that there is ways to manage the bloat and to reduce the risk but if you're gonna if you're gonna always lose one or two cows a year with bloat then economically it makes no sense um, if you're just doing it to reduce your nitrogen so i'm going to try and catch up with uh karen here who manages the farm and just have a bit of a chat about um about the impact it's had and just yeah just his thoughts on on clover here yeah so i've come in and i'm just uh catching up with uh karen now that's uh hey karen um, Managing the farm here, yeah, so yeah. yeah, how's the year been? Yeah, been a very good year this year. Um, yeah, been been a dream year, I suppose, compared to last year. Like, yeah, grass grew pretty well. Um, we wouldn't be the driest farm here, so I suppose we didn't suffer as much with drought as no. other people did. But um, yeah, I suppose we, um, yeah, no cows are probably looking like they're on track to maybe to do about 520 instead yep. of this year. So yeah. And you're milking um, what 155 is this year peak milk? Uh, yeah, about 155 peak milk this year. Um, what 130 last year? 125? 125 last year. Yeah. Yeah. So we took on um, a new block across the road there, um, about 37 acres. Yeah. So that's kind of um, brought our stocking rate down a bit. So uh, yeah. a bit more breeding, yeah. breeding space, I suppose. Yeah, because the stocking rate here was very high. I mean, it's a really flat farm. It's a, it's yeah. a tough, tough farm in the spring. Yeah. So I mean, my idea was always that, you know, you, you've got plenty of support land, drive the stocking rate up. When you can get the cows out in the spring, yeah. well, you might as well have more of them to go out and we well, can get yeah. through the grass then. But uh, yeah. just this block across the road, just drop the stocking rate back a bit. I mean, I've just been over there, had a chat about what what was done was reseeding. I mean, obviously, I was here earlier in the year doing a bit on reseeding, and now, yeah, some of the repercussions of that. I mean, uh, yeah. you struggle with bloat a bit. Yeah, I struggled a bit with it this year. I suppose it was uh, we didn't have much clover up till this year, so it was uh, all new to us. Um, so 
Yeah, we were going pretty good until about the end of July we lost the cow one night with bloat. Um, probably at first I thought it was, to be honest with you, it was only the second cow we lost this year, so we lost one in January, I think it was just something random. So I just thought it could have been just a random one dropped and so we kept going and yeah, we were going pretty all right then until about the first week of September. Mm. Went out one morning, there was two more, so then it was like, yeah, this is bloat or blew up. So um, yeah, we got bloat island put it in the water and uh, yeah and, and, and took more precaution I suppose um, but I was still concerned the whole time like every day morning you go out you're kind of wondering Jesus there's going to be another one or yeah, yeah. you know you're worried but um, yeah because even um, 10 days you know, two weeks ago yeah yeah you, you had to pull them off there again as well didn't you yeah 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 so about two weeks ago there um, I suppose we had been buffering a little bit of zero grazing grass or silage all the time we went across the road um, just to, you know, prevent uh, to, to, the risk of getting getting bloat. So that morning we um, had a good bit of grass built up because we were buffering the whole time we were on the clover when we probably nearly didn't need to at times, but I just kept it in for something to get something in their, in their stomach to reduce the risk. But uh, that one morning, one Saturday morning there recently, we, um, yeah, I didn't, they didn't get any so yeah. that morning, um, it was a damp enough morning, went up and we got 14 cows with blood that day, so... Um, so yeah, you saved them all? Saved them all, yeah, we just got them, we, we, we knew, like we, so we, said we'd, we said we'd go up and shake them two hours after we put them out, um, so we did and we got two and then we said we'd go back up again and then there was another few and another few, so yeah, we just got them in and got um, coconut oil, bacon soda and a bit of fairy liquid and a bit of water and down the neck and yeah, yeah, yeah. brought them down pretty quick in fairness but yeah if you, if you didn't if we hadn't checked them i'd say that would have had a few deaths yeah i mean yeah. the one thing i always say to people that go to the paddock mm -hmm. and you've got cows blown up is just get them moving yeah you know like if you get them moving then it opens them up and they start belching and they start moving some of that and so even getting them moving and yeah walking them up yeah. and down that lane yeah. can help but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah you know if they if they are in the paddock and they start getting uncomfortable then they lay down and everything yeah. blocks up they're yeah. gone yeah yeah so. so they go pretty quick like yeah so um yeah no we're, we're buffering with a bit of silage out many times and uh blow it out in the water and there's absolutely no trouble so yeah, yeah. it's just you have to be so careful i think yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, um, it's a massive impact, isn't it? I mean, they're yeah. never your worst cows that die of bloat, is it? No, no, so, no. no. Um, Any of them, yeah. So, um, yeah, no. Just uh, it's been a bit of a learning curve, alright. Um, yeah. But yeah, just uh, realizing that there, there is a big risk there if you. So the reseeds next year is clover going in. At the moment, I'm still un undecided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe it's a bit like woman with childbirth. You need time to get over this, and then maybe yeah. next year you sort of start yeah, thinking about. Yeah, yeah. Not that I'm comparing childbirth to clover and bloat, but still. No, it's, uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, no, it's uh, no, still undecided there now on that one. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see how we get on for the next while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, look, the cows are the cows are liking the newer seeds. There's no doubt about that. But. Mm. Um, yeah, just just uh, being careful now. Yeah, yeah, it's just managing it, isn't it? You yeah. know, so uh, yeah. so now we've we've certainly got a bit of awareness around it again. And, uh, I mm. suppose that's the thing. I mean, July, you know, yeah, you, you almost uh, you yeah. almost didn't switch on enough that mm. that it was such a risk, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's happened yeah. since. But yeah, 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 and I suppose there were, you know, in September there, there was probably. 18 or 1900 of a cover on those paddocks, you know, um, right. which I thought there would have been uh, a bit more of a safety net there too. There seemed to be a bit of fibre in it, like, you know, but yeah. still, no, um, no, no. Still, still, still got it, so. Um, mm, yeah, because it tends to be more of a problem when your covers are lower. I mean, 18, yeah. 1900 is, mm -hmm. uh, what, 33, 3400 in, in total covers. So that's, that's right up there. And again, when you look at ways to reduce the risk, if you allow the covers to go a little bit higher, usually the risk decreases as well. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, shorter yeah. is more fiery as well. But I mm -hmm. know, uh, oh, very good. Thanks for your time. And yeah, uh, no yeah hopefully, hopefully no problems next year. And hopefully we're able to reduce the nitrogen use on those paddocks a bit next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, well done. No, and uh, thank you. thanks. Yep. Yeah.